In our last two videos, we showed you a taste of how to find free camping on both BLM and National Forest land. We went from perfect weather to eight inches of snow to blazing heat. Today, we'll show you how we beat that heat by going subterranean, met two angels, and took a heavenly fall. It's nuts, it's this hot, because we were just camping high up in the California mountains, just off the Pacific Crest Trail, where we got eight inches of snow. Let's go run around in the snow. Wow. Yes, wow. yes. The Pacific Crest Trail is huge. It goes all the way from Mexico to Canada, through California, Oregon, and Washington. And we camped right next to it in the Hat Creek Forest. We saw hikers going by all the time, and with the crazy weather, we hope they were doing okay. Luckily, there are people dedicated to helping them on their journey. Yesterday, one of our neighbors stopped by to say hello, and it turns out he's a trail angel, so we're gonna head down to his camper to give him some donations. I'm Michael Dwyer, and welcome to the Trail Angel Cafe. Trail Angel basically sets out on the side of the trail. Primarily, the most important thing is water, uh, but also first aid items, food items, just items to help hikers get through the Pacific Crest Trail and other trails. I was just kind of looking for a spot to camp up north here, and uh, right now we're in Old Station, California, uh, or near Old Station, California. And I just stumbled upon it, and all of a sudden, all kinds of synchronicity, people started telling me about it. I got really, I think we all need some kindness and caring in our lives. It just felt really good. It's something I really want to do for the rest of the summer. Have happy travels and be free. If you're headed out to camp in California, heads up. You now need to have a free permit to have a campfire on all public land. On our way to the Hat Creek and Lassen Forest area, we were stunned by all the fire damage. Two major fires hit this area in the last 10 years and the devastation is everywhere. The area is beautiful and the Forest Service is working hard to bring it back but we can all help by getting this permit. Like I said, it's free and easy to get the permit. You can get it online right here, like I did. You just have to read a few tips on fire safety and sign up. It's that easy. It's a good thing we got that permit because right after all that snow melted in Hat Creek, a ranger rolled up. Doug was hysterical. This was his first visit from a ranger, and you would have thought the SWAT team was outside. But dispersed camping in the forest is just fine. It's not like we're Yogi Bear running from the ranger. <laughs> I chatted this guy up for a while. He stopped by to remind us there was the 14-day limit because we'd been there about a week, and he said he rarely sees full-timers in the forest dispersed camping. He usually just gets the weekend campers or the occasional squatter. And we had this whole area to ourselves. We didn't see another camper in sight. For everyone out there, the test boondocking is getting too crowded. Now sure, this ranger reminded us of the 14 day limit, but his big job is fire prevention and firefighting. And that makes him our second angel. When the sun came out, the temps were climbing. So we decided to go subterranean. <laughs> I knew you were watching me! <laughs> right underneath our campsite was a lava tube called the Subway Cave. It was created 20,000 years ago by lava flows that dried up, leaving a giant space. Hello. It's a one-of-a-kind experience. It's not tight if you're claustrophobic. It's just a self-guided, third-of-a-mile walk underground in complete darkness. So do be sure to bring Hello. a good flashlight. Yeah. We're walking where there was lava. Lava. That's nuts. That cave stays 46 degrees almost all the time, which sounds pretty good right about now. After that cave, we headed back to the 80s, and I don't mean degrees, and went to visit the Stand By Me Bridge. Doug had never seen the movie, so that night, we filled that gap in his childhood. Then we checked out some really cool art made out of old propane tanks and cement trucks and headed for a heavenly fall. And here's where we discovered our new favorite place in the world. It's called Bernie Falls.
President Theodore Roosevelt once called Bernie Falls the eighth wonder of the world because showers of spring-fed water burst out from the top and front of the falls, creating an endless cascade of water and mist. The falls were super easy to get to by car, but we decided to take a local trail in and walk the Bernie Falls Loop, which is right off the Pacific Crest Trail. It was absolutely one of the best days of our lives. Bernie Falls. Bernie Falls. It's amazing. It's amazing. Seriously, if anybody out there is headed towards Lassen National Park or Crater Lake or Klamath Falls, try and make a side trip to see Bernie Falls. It is not the tallest waterfall in California, but to me so far, it's the most beautiful. We actually considered moving to Bernie Falls so we could walk that loop every day, but no sticks and bricks for us. There's just too much left for us to see. Here's a sneak peek of our next travel episode where we'll show you three great overnight spots you won't find on any camping or RV app. We'll see you all next Sunday. Until then, everybody, have happy travels and be free.